Welcome! This video is an overview of our project titled What You Touch is What You Are. This touch technology enhanced learning and identification through perceived ownership. The project consists of two research lines. The first one, which is the main research line, tests whether touch interactions can enhance learning and social identification through perceived ownership. You may see in the model that representations of the self was included as an element in this interaction. Ultimately, though, we decided to study this independently, thus establishing the second research line in which we approach the question of how can the self be represented in digital interfaces. But I will first talk about the first research line. So perceived ownership is the subjective feeling that something belongs to us, regardless of whether or not we're actually its legal owner. And research has shown that perceived ownership can be enhanced by touch. And in some cases, touch can enhance perceived ownership even when it occurs via a touch screen. So based on this, the first hypothesis of our model is that touch-based interactions with symbols representing knowledge domains or social groups can elicit perceived ownership of the domain or group. Furthermore, research shows that touch-based interactions with images improve learning and that perceived ownership is related to commitment and social identification. From this, we derived the second hypothesis of our model, which is that touch-based interactions increase learning and identification with a knowledge domain or social group, mediated by the strength of perceived ownership of the domain or group. So we ran a set of six studies in which we tested different types of touch interactions with subjects that ranged from very abstract concepts that are not tangible in the physical world to real concrete objects. And we measured perceived ownership, learning and identification. Overall, we did not observe an effect of touch on perceived ownership, learning or identification. But I will describe a few of the studies so you can have an idea of how we approached our research question of whether touch interactions can enhance learning and identification through perceived ownership. One of our studies focused on the general domain of music. In this study, we presented consecutive sets of four music symbols and each new set repeated one symbol from the previous set. Participants had to identify the repeated symbol and drag and drop it into an empty box, either by using a touch screen or by using a mouse. This was a very brief touch manipulation that is similar in intensity to previous studies. We then presented texts about different areas of music, for example, musical notation, music history or composition and followed it with a series of questions about the text from which we obtained a learning score. We measured perceived ownership before and after the touch interaction and also after the learning task, so at the very end of the study. However, we observed no difference in perceived ownership of music between participants using the touch screen and those using a mouse. And seeing as our manipulation was not successful, it is unsurprising that we also did not observe a difference in learning between both groups. Another one of the studies focused on learning about fish. So in this study, participants were presented with images and text information about a fictional type of fish. When the information was represented in the image, so for example, if the text referred to a particular body part of the fish that was shown in the image, one group of participants was asked to draw a line from the text to the corresponding part of the image. So as opposed to the touch manipulation that we used in the study that I previously described, uh, we thought that this method would function in a similar way as signaling, which is a method used to enhance text picture integration um, where corresponding text and picture tasks are highlighted in corresponding colors. In comparison, the control group only had to 
read the material without interacting with it. Participants then had to answer a series of questions reflecting their integration of the text and the pictures and were also asked to recreate the image of the fish. So they had to draw the fish that had been shown to them. Although we did observe an effect of touch on text picture integration, the pattern of the data was not what we expected. The group who were asked to touch the text and connect it to the image had lower scores than those who did not touch the content. Additionally, we observed a similar pattern in regards to performance when recreating the drawing of the fish, with participants who touched the content having a poorer performance than those who did not touch the content. The final study I'll describe um, was one in which we tested the effect of touch on social identification. So in this study, participants were asked to trace a symbol, either on a touch screen or by using a mouse, and they were led to believe that their performance categorized them in one of two groups about which they were provided information. So we measured their perceived ownership and identification with the group. However, we observed no difference in perceived ownership of the group between participants using the touch screen and those using the mouse. Nor did we observe a difference between them in regards to identification with the group. So in conclusion, we obtained no evidence for an advantage of touch for learning, perceived ownership, or social identification. However, there is research showing that when technology supports our cognitive functions in the areas that may be weakest, these can actually improve performance, help us overcome biases, and enhance collaboration. Thus, we conclude that touch interactions do not affect learning in themselves, but they rather have the potential to do so if they add something of value to the experience of information processing or when they support the limitations of cognitive functions. So as we move on to the second research line, I'd like you to consider the number of online applications you use and the number of online accounts that you have. Technology now provides us with numerous digital environments in which we are represented in multiple ways. Some of these are very familiar to us, for example, if we use a real photo of ourselves or if we use our real name. But some of these representations are new, such as when we use an avatar or when our position on a navigator is represented by a symbol. As a large body of research shows that stimuli that are related to the self can have a wide range of psychological effects, we aimed to measure the impact of these digital representations of the self. So more specifically, we set out to compare the effective behavioral and cognitive effects of self-representations that are familiar and those that are new. So we ran a set of studies in which we directly compared the attentional and effective impact of stimuli that represent the self and stimuli that represent an other, such as a stranger. Um, we used familiar representations, new representations, and in some case we had them presented as a pairing. So familiar and new representations were presented together. Overall, we consistently observed that when familiar representations were used, Self-representations had a greater impact than representations of a stranger. However, we did not observe a difference in the impact of self and stranger representations when these representations were new. From our studies, we have concluded that familiarity is a precondition for self-associated stimuli to be able to impact attention. In the context of other studies that have been carried out exploring this same topic, we consider that an important element in our studies is that we measured the impact of self and stranger representations when they are presented on the screen at the same time. 
Thus, we think that familiarity is especially important in digital environments where multiple entities are represented at once. So think of this as a screen in which you can see many users at the same time. Finally, it's important to consider that representations of the self are mostly used as directional cues that guide interactions rather than being the central element of an interaction. For this reason, they should be designed in a way that they require minimal cognitive resources and familiarity is one way in which cognitive load can be reduced. To conclude, in order to enhance the effectivity of an application, its design should be purposeful in aiding cognitive information processing and be specific to each interaction. So they should reduce unnecessary noise and specifically target common cognitive limitations that occur in the specific action that is being carried out. We've produced several manuscripts reporting the results from our studies, which we hope to have published in the future. And finally, we'd like to thank our collaborators and assistants, and also thank you for watching our videos.